Today, the world mourns as we pay tribute to the stars who left us on this day, the 23rd of January 2024. In this episode of Who Died Today, we'll delve into the lives of 11 big stars whose legacies continue to shine, even in their absence. Stay tuned as we unravel the stories behind their stardom, the impact they had on the world, and the void they've left behind. From Hollywood legends to music icons, our journey today is a poignant reflection on the profound influence these individuals had on our lives. But that's not all. We've got exclusive insights and interesting tidbits that you won't find anywhere else. So why should you watch till the end? Because this isn't just a list of names. It's a celebration of extraordinary lives, a chance to remember, and a tribute to the indelible mark they've left on our hearts. Stick around as we explore the fascinating journeys of these 11 luminaries and uncover the impact they've had on the world of entertainment. Before we begin, take a moment to honor these remarkable individuals. Now, let's embark on this emotional journey together. Welcome, everyone, to Celebrities Who Died Today. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe, because we're here to bring you the stories that matter in the world of entertainment. Your support keeps the legacies alive. Let's dive in. Number 1. Tommy Baldwin Tommy Baldwin was born in Gateshead, England on October 10, 1945. He started his career at Arsenal, but he was soon traded to Chelsea in 1966 in a part exchange deal for George Graham. He quickly became a fan favorite at Stamford Bridge, scoring 17 goals in his debut season and helping Chelsea reach the 1967 FA Cup final, where they lost to Tottenham. Baldwin was known for his ability to absorb tackles, which earned him the nickname The Sponge. He was also a versatile player who could play as a winger or a center forward. He formed a lethal partnership with Peter Osgood, who was his best friend on and off the pitch. Together, they led Chelsea to their first major trophy in 1970, when they beat Leeds in a thrilling FA Cup final replay at Old Trafford. The following year, Baldwin and Osgood were instrumental in Chelsea's historic triumph in the European Cup Winners' Cup, as they defeated Real Madrid in another replay in Athens. Baldwin scored the opening goal in the first leg and set up Osgood for the winner in the second leg. He also scored in the 1972 League Cup final, but Chelsea lost to Stoke. Baldwin left Chelsea in 1974 after scoring 92 goals in 239 appearances for the club. He had brief spells at Millwall, Manchester United and Seattle Sounders before ending his career at Brentford, where he also worked as a coach. He later returned to Chelsea as a matchday host and often reunited with his former teammates and fans. Sadly, Tommy Baldwin passed away on January 22, 2024, at the age of 78, following a long illness. He is survived by his wife, two sons, and four grandchildren. He will always be remembered as one of Chelsea's legends and one of the most popular players in the club's history. Number 2. Derek Bragg Derek Bragg was born and raised in Greenspond a small fishing community on the island of Newfoundland. He had a strong sense of public service from an early age, serving as the town clerk and manager for 30 years, and the fire chief for 28 years. He also served on the board of directors for the NL Association of Municipal Administrators for eight years, including five years as president. In 2015, he entered provincial politics winning the seat for Fogo Island Cape Friels as a Liberal candidate. He was re-elected in 2019 and held various cabinet positions, including Minister of Municipal Affairs and Environment, Minister of Transportation and Infrastructure, and Minister of Fisheries, Forestry, and Agriculture. He was known for his passion, dedication, and humor, as well as his ability to handle difficult situations with grace and courage. One of his most memorable moments was in April 2023, when he faced a crowd of angry crab fishermen who were protesting a low price for their catch. He stood up to them and said, I had the guts, probably more guts than brains, to stand in front of you guys and get in this mic. His honesty and bravery 
earned him respect from both sides of the dispute, and he helped broker a deal that ended the standoff. In June 2023, he announced that he had been diagnosed with tongue cancer and stepped away from his portfolio to focus on his treatment. He remained in cabinet as minister without portfolio, providing advice to his colleagues. He also rang the bell at the Dr. H. Bliss Murphy Cancer Center in August, signaling the end of his chemotherapy. Unfortunately, his cancer was too aggressive, and he succumbed to the disease on January 22, 2024. His death was mourned by many, including Premier Andrew Fury, who said, Derek was many things to many people, but perhaps above all, Derek was always an ardent and patriotic son of Newfoundland and Labrador. Derek Bragg was a man who devoted his life to serving his community, his province, and his country. He was a loyal son and brother, a devoted father and grandfather, a loving and committed husband, and a friend to all who knew him. He will be greatly missed, but his legacy will live on. Number 3. Elk Herb Elk Herb was born on February 18, 1938, in Schöbach, a small town in the Eiffel region of Germany. Her father was a Marxist literary historian who lost his job under the Nazi regime and moved his family to a rural area to avoid persecution. Her mother was a farmer who worked on the land. Elk was the eldest of three sisters, all of whom became writers. In 1949, after the end of World War II, Elk's father brought his family to Hal, in the Soviet occupation zone, where he resumed his academic career. Elk attended school and later studied German, Slavic studies and pedagogy at Hal University. She also worked as a farm worker, an editor and a translator. She married the poet Adolf Endler and had a son, Conrad, who also became a writer. Elk Erb began writing poetry and prose in the 1960s and published her first books in the 1970s. Her style was experimental, witty and precise, often challenging the conventions of language and thought. She was part of the literary subculture in the GDR and supported civil rights activists who opposed the communist regime. She also translated works from Russian, Polish and English into German and vice versa. After the fall of the Berlin Wall in 1989, Elk Erb continued to write and publish prolifically and received numerous awards and honors for her work. She was widely regarded as a master of poetic expression and a mentor for younger writers. She influenced generations of poets in East and West Germany and beyond. Elk Erb died on January 22, 2024, in Berlin at the age of 85. She left behind a rich and diverse body of work that reflects her keen observation, critical thinking, and creative imagination. She was a poet with stubbornness, as one of her titles suggests, who never stopped exploring the possibilities of language and poetry. Number 4. Gary Graham Gary Graham was born on June 6, 1950, in Long Beach, California. He started his acting career in the mid-1970s, appearing in various TV shows such as Eight is Enough, Starsky and Hutch, and The Incredible Hulk. He also had a role in the movie All the Right Moves, opposite Tom Cruise. But his breakthrough came in 1989, when he was cast as the human cop who partnered with an alien detective in the TV series Alien Nation, based on the movie of the same name. The show only lasted one season, but it spawned five TV movies that continued the story of the alien refugees and their integration into human society. Graham's character, Matthew Sykes, was a tough but compassionate cop who learned to respect and befriend his alien partner, George Francisco, played by Eric Pierpoint. Graham became a part of the Star Trek universe in 2001, when he joined the cast of Star Trek, Enterprise as Sovol, the Vulcan ambassador to Earth. He appeared in 12 episodes of the show, and his character had a complex arc, going from a distrustful and arrogant diplomat to a loyal and courageous ally of the humans. Graham also played other characters in the Star Trek franchise, such as Tannis and Ocampa in Star Trek, Voyager, 
and Ragnar, a renegade in the fan-made series Star Trek Renegades. Groen was also a musician who fronted several bands, such as the Gary Graham Garage Band, the Gary Graham Band, and the Sons of Kirk. He performed at various conventions and events, and was known for his friendly and humorous personality. Sadly, Graham passed away on January 22, 2024, at the age of 73. He is survived by his wife, Becky, and his daughter, Haley, from his previous marriage to actress Susan Lavelle. His death was announced by Lavelle on Facebook, who wrote, It is with deep profound sadness to say that Gary Graham, my ex-husband, amazing actor and father of our beautiful only child together, Haley Graham, has passed away today. We are completely devastated, especially our daughter Haley. His wife, Becky, was by his side. Brom will be remembered by his fans and colleagues as a talented and versatile actor who brought life and depth to his sci-fi roles. He will be missed by the Star Trek and Alien Nation communities and by everyone who enjoyed his work. Rest in peace, Gary Graham. Number 5. Jack Jennings, Veteran Jack Jennings was born in 1919 in England. He joined the army in 1939 and was part of the Cambridgeshire Regiment. In 1942, he was captured by the Japanese in Singapore, along with 85,000 other Allied soldiers. He was then forced to work on the construction of a railway that connected Thailand and Myanmar, then Burma. This railway was known as the Death Railway because of the brutal conditions and the high death toll of the workers. More than 90,000 Asian civilians and 16,000 prisoners of war died during the project. Jack Jennings endured hunger, disease, torture, and exhaustion for more than three years. He survived by playing his harmonica, which he had brought with him from England. He also made his own chess set, which he used to pass the time and keep his mind sharp. He was liberated in August 1945, after the end of the war. He returned to his childhood sweetheart, Lillian Mary, who he married in December 1945. They had two daughters and lived a happy life together. Jack Jennings did not talk about his wartime experiences for many years, until he wrote a memoir at the age of 73. He then became a member of the Far East Prisoners of War Association and attended regular reunions. He also visited Singapore and Thailand four times, where he was greeted with respect and gratitude. Jack Jennings died on January 22, 2024, at the age of 104. He was thought to be the last survivor of the Burma Railway. He was a man of courage, resilience, and kindness. He did the wonderful life and left a lasting legacy. He was a true history hero. Number 6. Dexter King Dexter was born on January 30, 1961, in Atlanta, Georgia, at the height of his father's work in the civil rights movement. He was named after the Dexter Avenue Baptist Church in Montgomery, Alabama, where his father was pastor before moving to the Ebenezer Baptist Church in Atlanta. Dexter was only seven years old when his father was assassinated in 1968. He learned about the tragedy via breaking news bulletin while he was watching television with his brother, Martin he grew up in a world where his father's legacy loomed large, and he faced many challenges and expectations as a son of a national hero. Dexter attended Morehouse College, where his father had studied, but he did not finish his college education. He tried different careers, such as a corrections officer, a music promoter, and an attorney. He also worked as a civil and animal rights activist, following his parents' footsteps. In 1989, he briefly served as president of the King Center, the organization founded by his mother to promote his father's vision of nonviolent social change. He resigned after four months, but he returned in 1995 to take over after his mother's retirement. He remained chairman of the King Center until his death. Dexter also wrote a memoir titled Growing Up King an intimate memoir in which he shared his personal experiences and reflections as a son of Dr. King. He portrayed his father in the TV movie, The Rosa Parks Story, 
and voiced him in the animated film, Our Friend Martin. Dexter was married to Leah Weber King since 2013. He had no children. He died peacefully in his sleep at his home in Malibu, California, with his wife by his side. Sadly, Dexter King passed away on January 22, 2024, at the age of 62, after a battle with prostate cancer. Dexter Scott King was a man who faced many difficulties and pressures in his life, but he also showed courage, compassion, and commitment to justice. He was not only a son of Dr. King, but also a leader and a legacy in his own right. He will be missed and remembered by many. Number 7. Leo Lubin Leo Lubin was born on September 19, 1977, in Ramat Gan, Israel. He started his basketball career as a player, and later became a coach. As a player, he was known for his skills, tactics, and leadership. He played for several teams in Israel and abroad, such as Maccabi Petah Tikva, Ironi Ramat Gan, Maccabi Tel Aviv, Hepol Tel Aviv, Azov Mash, Apollon Patras, and CSK Sofia. He won the Israeli League Championship in 2003 with Maccabi Tel Aviv, and was the Israeli League Assists Leader in 2000 with Ironi Ramat Gan. As a coach, he shared his vast basketball wisdom with many young players and teams. He coached Kepol Gilbo Galil, Hepol Holon, Makobi Ashtod, Aroni Nesliona, and Hepol Bia Shiva. He also served as an assistant coach for the Israeli national team and Panathinaikos Athens. He won the Israeli Cup in 2017 with Hepol Gilbo Galil and led Hepol Bia Shiva to the Israeli Basketball Premier League for the first time in 2022. Sadly, Leo Lubin passed away on January 22, 2024, at the age of 46, after a brave battle with cancer. Leo Lubin was more than just a basketball star. He was a fighter, a mentor, a friend, and a family man. He left behind a wife and three children, who were with him in his last moments. He also left behind a legacy of passion, dedication, and excellence in Israeli basketball. He inspired many people with his courage and resilience, both on and off the court. Leo Dubin, you will be missed, but never forgotten. Thank you for everything you did for the game and the country. Rest in peace, legend. Number 8. Marty, Comics Artist Marty was born in Barcelona in 1955. He was interested in drawing since he was a child, and he published his first comics in underground magazines like Picadura Selecta and Los Tebios del Rolo in the 1970s. He was influenced by the American underground comics movement, especially by Robert Crumb, and he developed a style that was realistic, expressive, and satirical. In 1979, he joined the group of cartoonists that launched El Vibora, a magazine that revolutionized the Spanish comic scene with its adult, provocative, and politically incorrect content. Marty became one of the most popular and influential artists of the magazine, and he created several series, such as Modern Stories, The Cabbie, and The Killer. His most famous work is Taxista, which began to be published in 1982. It stars a taxi driver, Taxista Quatreplazas, who witnesses and narrates the absurd and violent events that happen in the streets of Barcelona. The comic is a dark and hilarious critique of the urban decay, social injustice, and moral corruption of the modern society. Marty also worked for other magazines, such as Cairo, Makoki, and El Juides, and he collaborated with other artists, such as Max and Nazario. He also published several books, such as Barcelona, The Great City, the Adventures of Sylvester Paradox, and The Last Days of the Graphic Novel. Marty was a prolific and versatile artist who experimented with different genres, formats, and techniques. He was also a master of black humor, irony, and sarcasm, and he used his comics as a weapon to denounce the hypocrisy and stupidity of the human condition. Unfortunately, Marty passed away on January 22, 2024, at the age of 68, after a long illness. 
He left behind a legacy of brilliant and original comics that have inspired and entertained generations of readers and artists. He was one of the founders of L.V. Borough and one of the greatest comic artists of all time. Number 9. Arno Allen Penzias Penzias was born in Munich, Germany on April 26, 1933, to a Jewish family. When he was six years old, he and his brother were sent to Britain as part of the Kinder Transport Rescue Operation, escaping the Nazi persecution. Later, his parents joined them, and they moved to New York City in 1940. Penzias was interested in science from an early age and graduated from Brooklyn Technical High School in 1951. He then studied physics at the City College of New York and Columbia University, where he worked under Charles Townes, the inventor of the Meso. In 1962, Penzias joined Bell Labs, a leading research center for telecommunications and electronics. There, he met Robert Wilson, another radio astronomer, and they started to use a large horn antenna to study radio emissions from the Milky Way galaxy. However, they encountered a mysterious noise that seemed to come from all directions of the sky. They tried to eliminate all possible sources of interference, such as pigeons nesting in the antenna, but the noise persisted. They soon realized that they had stumbled upon a cosmic phenomenon that had been predicted by some physicists, such as Robert Dick from Princeton University. The noise was the remnant of the intense radiation that filled the universe right after the Big Bang when it was extremely hot and dense. As the universe expanded and cooled, the radiation stretched into microwaves, which are invisible to the human eye, but detectable by radio telescopes. Penzias and Wilson published their findings in 1965, and they were hailed as a major breakthrough in cosmology. They shared the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1978 for their discovery of the cosmic microwave background radiation which is now considered one of the pillars of modern cosmology. Penzies continued to work at Bell Labs for many years, becoming the director of the Radio Research Laboratory, the vice president of research, and the vice president and chief scientist. He also wrote several books and articles and received many honors and awards for his contributions to science and society. Penzies died from complications of Alzheimer's disease in San Francisco, on January 22, 2024, at the age of 90. He is survived by his wife, Sherry Levitt, and their three children. Arno Allen Penzias was a remarkable scientist and a human being, who overcame many challenges and made a lasting impact on our understanding of the universe. Number 10, Giju Weaver. Giju Weaver was born in Leguno, a small town near the Swiss border, in 1944. He had a difficult childhood, losing both his parents at a young age. He found solace in football and started his professional career with Legnano in 1962. But it was with Cagliari, the club he joined in 1963, that he became a legend. He helped the Sardinian team achieve promotion to Serie A for the first time in 1964 and led them to their only league title in 1970. He scored 208 goals in 378 games for Caviari and became a symbol of the island's pride and identity. He was also a hero for the Italian national team, scoring 35 goals in 42 appearances, making him the all-time leading scorer for the Azzurri. He won the European Championship in 1968 and reached the World Cup final in 1970 where he scored one of the goals in the epic 4-3 win over West Germany in the semi-final. He was nicknamed Rombo di Turno, Roar of Thunder, for his powerful left foot, his speed, and his aerial ability. He was also known for his loyalty, humility, and generosity. He stayed with Cagliari until his retirement in 1976, despite offers from bigger clubs. He later served as the president of Cagliari in 1987 and as the team manager of the Italian national team from 1988 to 2013. Unfortunately, Gigi Weaver passed away on January 22, 2024, 
at the age of 79. Gigi Riva was a true champion, on and off the pitch. He inspired generations of fans and players with his talent, passion, and character. He will be dearly missed, but never forgotten. Number 11. Mark Scheider Kunst Mark Scheider Kunst is a band from St. Petersburg, Russia, that was founded in 1992 by a group of geology students. The name of the band means Mine Surveyor Art in German, and it reflects their original hobby of exploring underground tunnels and caves. The band members were inspired by the music of Africa, Latin America, and Jamaica, and they started to experiment with different styles and instruments, such as congas, timbales, saxophone, trumpet, and trombone. The band's first album, Art F.O., was released in 1992, and it featured songs in Russian, English, Spanish, and Swahili. The band gained popularity in the underground scene of Street Petersburg, and soon they started to perform at various festivals and clubs across Russia and Europe. Their second album, Kembit, was released in 1996, and it showcased their fusion of rockabilly, world, reggae, ska, and jazz. In 1998, the band released their third album, Street Petersburg Kinshasa Transit, which was a tribute to the music of Congo and Zaya. The album featured guest vocals from Seraphim Makangila, a Congolese singer who joined the band for a few years. The album was a hit among the fans of world music, and it earned the band a nomination for the BBC Radio 3 World Music Awards in 2000. The band continued to release albums and tour around the world, collaborating with various artists and musicians, such as Madhu Cheo, Yuri Shevchuk, and Emil Kosturica. Their music was also featured in several movies and TV shows, such as Peter FM, Oxygen, and Love in the City 2. The band's latest album, Freedom, was released in 2020, and it celebrated their 28 years of musical journey. Sadly, on January 22, 2024, the band's lead singer, guitarist, and songwriter, Sergei Yefremenko, also known as EFR, passed away at the age of 51, after a short illness. He was the soul and the voice of the band, and he will be greatly missed by his fans and friends. His death was a huge loss for the Russian and the global music scene. Mark Scheider Kunst is a band that has brought joy, energy, and diversity to the world of music. They have created a unique sound that blends different cultures, languages, and genres. They have shown that music can transcend borders, barriers, and stereotypes. They have been an inspiration for many people, and they will always be remembered as one of the pioneers of world fusion music. And there you have it, a half full journey through the lives of the stars we've lost on this day, the 23rd of January 2024. Their stories are etched in our memories, and their contributions to the world of entertainment will forever resonate. If you found this video meaningful and want to keep the spirit of these legends alive, don't forget to hit the like button and share it with fellow enthusiasts. Your engagement helps us honor their legacies. Connect with us on social media for more updates, behind the scenes content, and discussions about the stars we love and miss. As we say goodbye, let's remember that though these stars may have left us, their impact is everlasting. Thank you for joining us on this emotional journey. If you haven't already subscribed to Celebrities Who Died Today, make sure to do so. Stay tuned for more insightful tributes, engaging stories, and the celebration of lives well lived. Thank you for being a part of our community. Until next time, take care, and may the legacies of these stars continue to shine bright.